Hey guys, this is Steel Kid Gaming here, back with another scripting tutorial. And today, I'm going to be teaching you how to make this sort of keypad opening door sort of thing. So yeah, let's just get started. So, um, before we actually start um, with the scripting sort of things, I just wanted to cover what I did over here just in general with the building and all of that. So, of course, first of all, we got some wooden planks for the wall, <clears throat> a door that's different color, and also a little bit uh, smaller in length, oh, sorry, width, just so um, it's more distinguishable. And then, of course, for the keypad over here, I put a basic frame. Um, <clears throat> in the actual keypad itself, I put a, a black sort of screen to show the code. Um, and all these buttons here are from a head mesh. I pull it out here, that's the head mesh, right there. Now, of course, I put an indent right here, and I made the buttons um, sort of pop out a little more because I will be making that button pressing motion, and I will be adding a sound just for satisfaction purposes. So the first thing that I did, of course, was going into a button and just sort of scripting how the button presses and how it sort of moves. Now, of course, in here, there's a lot of stuff. Don't worry, I'll go over every everything. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, well, you know what? Let's just start from the top. Now, of course, the first one is the click sound. So, of course, this should be pretty self-explanatory. Nope, I'm not sure if you can hear that. But um, that's just for the clicking sound in-game. The click detector should be also be pretty self-explanatory. It's just so that the mouse can actually click the button and to make it work, things like that. Mesh, this is just for the to make it look like a head or like a button. Uh, surface GUI over here, once again, pretty self-explanatory. It's just to show the number um, in-game. Now, of course, here is when we actually start scripting. Now, of course, this does look like a lot. Don't worry, I'll cover everything. <laughs> now, this sort of DB is equal to false, this, this sort of thing, is basically um, just sort of a reload sort of thing, where basically it's saying that once the person clicks it, it's going to turn to true. So if the person clicks it maybe two times, the first time it'll set it to true. But you see this if db is equal to false, which basically means that they it will have to wait until it's false again before the script can run again. And because there are two wait 0.1s here, that means it'll take a total of 0.2 seconds for the button to be able to be clicked again and for the script to work. So I hope that was a quick explanation. Now, of course, inside here, um, the script up here in position, all that stuff right over here is basically just doing that button pressing motion where it sort of um, goes in a little bit and then pops back out. So that's the script up here in position part. The script up here in dot click colon play, that should also be self explanatory. I'm just referencing the sound and playing it. Now, this is the part where it gets a little complicated, I guess. But what I'm saying here is that. Inside this um, keypad, inside co inside Kocho, which is the, which is the screen, I have a surface or I have a text label pretty much inside, and this is going to be where uh, the code is shown. So if I go into here, I'm basically referencing the text and saying, "Oh, we let's um, add uh, the number to it." And the way I did that was, first of all, I referenced the text label. So, you know, script.parent.parent, dot code shower, surface UI text label, dot text. Once again, that's inside properties right over here. Now, of course, after that, I just said, oh, yeah, we're going to set it to the text. So the text that's already in. And along with that, at the end, we are going to add the number that we choose. And the reason why I did script.parent.name and not just zero is just so to make everything easier. You don't want to go through every, every you know, all 10 buttons and switching out the number. So all I did was script.parent.name, which is zero in this case, which is the one we want. Now, of course, after that, we have the weights, script.parent position, pop it back out. So long story short, what this is basically saying is that when this, uh, sorry, when this button is clicked, okay, if the button hasn't been clicked before in the past 0.2 seconds, then um, kind of retract the button, play the sound, um, add the number to the text or you know um, to the code shower. 
then of course wait a little bit and then pop the button back out and then wait a little bit and then uh, let the person click it again because sometimes there will be double codes and either way it just makes everything easier it stops a little bit of spamming things like that and I pretty much did the same thing for all the other other uh, number buttons so of course let's say I click one right here you can see that it puts one maybe I put an eight maybe eight in the code I'll put eight and now it's one eight or eighteen and the reason why it doesn't just go one and then and then it deletes everything and then turns to eight is because of this script parent dot code uh, sorry it's because I'm referencing the text that's already inside and then I'm adding on to it so that's why this double dot is here I should probably tell you that as well so yeah I pretty much did that for all the uh, numbers from zero to nine now this is the part where it might get a little bit complicated so I hope I can uh, keep up I guess now I'm gonna um, start with the red button which is the decline button and of course the same thing pretty much goes but of course there is no surface GUI because well I don't think we need it but inside here I basically did the same thing you know retract it um, you know play the sound pop it back out but the only thing different is this text right here and that's um, and the reason why I set it to nothing is because this is the decline button this is supposed to clear every single text inside here so that's why this this has nothing because we don't want to have anything inside this uh, display here showing any code so that's pretty much actually it for decline for accept this one's going to be a little tricky so I hope I can uh, sorry explain it to you as well as I can now once again we're going to you know if the button is clicked you know make sure it hasn't been clicked in the past couple of, uh, milliseconds stuff like that you know pop uh, pop it in uh, you know play the sound and this is the new part all right now what this is saying is that if the um, text or if the code that is shown is equal to script parent parent code value which right up here is basically the actual code so whatever the actual code is you want to put this in a string value by the way whatever the code is right up here it's going to check all right it's going to check what code or what value is in here so let's say you want your code to be one two three four five all right so then put one two three four five in the string the same code if you want to name it something else for some reason just remember to reference the actual name here or else it won't work so of course inside here it's going to be one two three four five for me you can change it to whatever you want you can change it to however long however short your choice but yeah um all this is saying is that if the text that is shown in uh in the display is the same as the codes or the actual code that is correct then game dot workspace dot door dot activate uh dot value equals true now i'm going to go over this um really quickly just after I finish this part right here. Now this is just the if statement, of course. So that means that if it isn't, all right, if the code is is not correct, then just sort of pass over this, all right? This is this is nothing. It acts like, oh, this this wasn't even there. And it's basically just the delete button now because of this script up here in text is, well, nothing. Of course, you could take this out if you want and make the red button the only thing you can use to clear. But I personally like to clear it as well with the green. So yeah. Now after that, you're probably wondering what this that script parent or sorry game workspace dot door dot activated thing was. And if I go over here inside the door, which is the one we want to open, you can see that there is a bool value, which is a true false value. And you can see that its name is activate. So what I'm saying here is basically just making um, that value true course if you notice it's actually false right now and in the scripts of course I'm going to cover this as well what but what this is basically saying is that it's going to be checking for this value to be true all right so what I'm saying is I'm going to be constantly checking that's why the while true do is here all the ends and weights but what I'm saying is that if script dot parent dot value equals true which other mean which either way oh, sorry which basically means if activate is true which basically means that if the person who have, the person who entered the code got it correct which you know the true then do this and what I'm saying here 
is basically just, oh, you know, make the uh, door transparent and, of course, make a can collide false. So long story short, it turns us invisible and you can pass through. Of course, then after five seconds, you know, uh, make the door appear again and close the door. Now, of course, if you want to make this shorter or longer, that's your choice. It's fully customizable. This part up here is just making sure that we do have this activate or else there might be an error because it can't even find activate because it's not even loaded in yet. So yeah, and of course, if we run the game, you can see that now we know that our code is one, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to put in one, two, three, four, five. Of course, you can see it's displayed here. And if I press this green button, of course, the door opens. Now, if we wait another five seconds, boop, and it's closed again. Of course, that the reason for that is because of this wait five, and also because of this false right here. Because if if it was always true, then the second the watcher do loop goes again, it's just going to stay on. Like it's not going to close at any point. You might you might see the door close for a split second, but that's pretty much it. And the reason for that is because this is true. Like it's whatever it, whenever it is true, it is going to run this. So that's why we want to put false at the very end so that it closes the door until the next person enters the correct key. So yeah, um, I hope that's pretty much it for this video. I hope I covered everything in a uh, as clear as I could, of course. If you have any questions, once again, just leave them down in the comments. I will try to answer them as soon as I can. I hope this uh, was helpful for you. Have fun scripting, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!